Welcome everyone to our 14th episode of the HKN Connection. My name is Sandro Sartoni. I'm one of the two 2021 student governors to the HKN Board of Governors and current head of social media, PhD student in computer engineering at Politecnico di Torino, Italy, and your host for today. Today, our topic is HKN and we, and our guests are Charlotte Blair and Karen Panit. Dr. Charlotte Blair is the ANSYS North America Technical Support Manager for Electronic and Electromagnetic Simulation Tools, which includes AEDT, HFSS, HFSS 3D Layout, SciWave, Maxwell, and iSpec. She has been with ANSYS for 10 years, starting as a field applications engineer, engaging directly with customers. Charlotte has her PhD and Master of Science in Electrical Engineering from New Jersey Institute of Technology and her Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from Rutgers University. She worked in the microwave filter industry for over two decades, designing cavity filters for wireless operators for radio frequency systems, now Nokia. As part of giving back to industry, she currently serves as tools working group chair for IEEE Industry Engagement Committee Region 1 Coordinator for IEEE Women in Engineering and Conference Chair for IEEE We Forum East and, most importantly, volunteer with IEEE HKN. Charlotte's passion is the promotion of electrical engineering for all. Karen Panetta received a Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering from Boston University and a Master of Science and PhD in Electrical Engineering from Northeastern University. As the first female electrical engineer to be given tenure in the electrical and computer engineering department, Panetta continues to promote the interests of women in her field. From 2007 to 2009, she was a worldwide director for IEEE Women in Engineering, the largest international professional organization dedicated to promoting women engineers and scientists. And she served as editor-in-chief for the IEEE Women in Engineering magazine. She is the faculty advisor to the Tufts student chapters of both the Society of Women Engineering and the IEEE, and is founder of the nationally acclaimed Nerd Girls program, which promotes engineering disciplines to young students. She is a fellow of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, IEEE, and was awarded the 2013 IEEE Award for Distinguished Ethical Practices for Exemplary Contributions and Leadership in developing ethics and social responsibility in students. She has received several NASA and National Science Foundation research grants, including the NSF Career Award. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded Panetta the Presidential Award for Science and Engineering Education and Mentoring. With this, I would like to welcome you and thank you so much for being a part of this episode and for taking your time to be with me uh, today. So I would like to first start uh, going on a background on IEEE Women in Engineering. So the first question is directed to Karen and I would like to ask you if you could please tell us more about the values and goals of this organization. Sure, thank you, Sandro. It is a great pleasure to be here with you today and with Charlotte. Uh, we have been working on women in engineering for over, coming up on 25 years. And one of the things that I joined WIE for years ago was as women are still the most or least representative um, in all of the fields of electrical engineering. So one of the reasons I joined was to interact and network with other female engineers, but also to help us grow and bring awareness and bring more young people into the discipline. So we, WIE, I, brings the network. That was the big thing when it was, we started with was networking. And we did this through many different programs and initiatives. So we do a lot of outreach. We do, do a lot of professional development. And this out of this came the Women in Engineering magazine because most of the women that we speak to always give us wonderful stories, but they don't understand that they think they're the only ones that exhibited these challenges. And we wanted something to help everybody share their experience, their pathways, and to encourage other young women 
that, hey, you can do this. Anyone can do this. And here's how some of the best practices and build this community. And that's how I met Charlotte. So, you know, and, and, and I think that this has been a wonderful experience. And my first bit, the plug is going to be anyone who's listening to this podcast, even if you're a student, send us something about your section, about you, your research, and we will publish it in the magazine and help celebrate you and your dreams. Thank you, Sandro. Thanks, yeah, Karen. let me just add, Sandro. Yeah, sure. Karen was, it, it was uh, too nice. She didn't mention that she also was the founding mother of the We Form East Conference. And that is where, how really uh, Karen and I melt. She, she formulated this large region one, region two initiative with uh, connecting women in, in the, uh, uh, the two IEEE regions. And it was so big, I think there was like maybe 400 people there, but Karen took the time to meet every individual. And this is how I met her. And she so opened and, you know, offered information and encouragement. And that's how I got involved. So Karen, you've neglected to say what other initiatives <laughs> you had besides the magazine and uh, Nerd well Girls. Well, thank you, Charlotte, but I also want to bring up that, you know, it's a great point because the WE conference, which has now been rebranded as the ILC, is really a staple now of, 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 of women in engineering, but that yeah. initiative was initially funded entirely, the first WE conference was initially funded by Google. So we had corporate sponsors, and that was done with another past chair from India, uh, Dr. Ramalatha Miramithu. So we have to give her credit, too, because she really spearheaded. We co-did it together. We struggled through it together. And then when uh, everybody saw how impactful it was, you can now see that thousands of women and people attend these conferences. So, yes, it has grown quite a bit. Thank you, Charlotte. Yep. Global I mean, impact. You got the good people. <laughs> That is really interesting, and I would like to hear more about these or other uh, examples later when we uh, will go through your experience, but it's really, really, really interesting. And uh, building on, on top of this, I would like to ask Charlotte, so now that we know what uh, IEEE WE stands for, uh, how is it organized? Like, does it have sections like uh, similar to our IEEE HKN chapters? And if so, uh, what do these sections organize uh, in their day-to-day -day activities? So the uh, Women in Engineering, the WE chapters, there's a chapter that can exist in every IEEE region, okay, just like the HKN sections. And so we're not, the WE is an affinity group. It's not limited just to students. It's open to any IEEE member. Again, an affinity group uh, to encourage and promote women in engineering and in the sciences. Um, I, I just happened to look at our uh, metrics uh, uh, this week, and we have a good share of students within the women in engineering affinity group. Okay, so we join for free, more, we join for free, make sure they know they join for free. If they're not member yes. students, join for free. <laughs> yes, I know. And I, I mean, hey, that's that's the best part free. That was the thing, you know. So this is it's really it's it's a networking where not it, it's not only students and uh, professors from academia. You also get to meet with the uh, members of industry and and network with people again not only in your section in your region, but globally. Now, right now, currently are we student members? Uh, we have a, about a, I'm gonna say 25% uh, uh, ratio between student and members. Okay, so there's a nice mix there. Um, region 10 is where we have most of our we student members. Okay, and followed by that is uh, region one, which is Northeast USA. And then where you are in region eight comes in at third. So you have a lot of we student members. So a lot of joint activities. Again, just like the HKN uh, uh, students, uh, these are open to, you know, we is open to any IEEE member and, you know, students can be undergraduates or graduates. Right, and male or female. So that's one of the things I think people yes. don't realize. 
they always think women in engineering is just for women. And I think one of our, uh, our members said it best. He said, in, in, he said uh, women in engineering is for women and anybody who knows a woman. That should be, we should have 100% uh, IEEE members to also be we members then. <laughs> That's it. That's really yeah, thank you. Thank you, Charlotte, for your for your answer. And thank you, Karen, for clarifying that, because I think it, yeah, it might be a common question, maybe for someone who has never had the chance to go into details about IEEE, we, women in engineering, is it only for women? Apparently not. Uh, it's for everyone, of course, which is really interesting and great. And so, um, Karen, uh, would you like to expand a little bit more on what resources does uh, IEEE we offer uh, to its members? Sure. So when we first started, we had Charla talked about affinity groups. So when you start your own we chapter, you you really can direct it to be whatever you want to serve your members. So in in Region Eight, for instance, a lot of uh, Region Eight and Region Ten, they they our chapters really love to do outreach. So that's K through 12 or um, education, working with disabled or different able children in communities. And this is where the partnerships come in. We work a lot with IHKN and we work a lot with the IEEE Humanitarian Activities Committee, which sponsors projects to do, uh, you know, a, different types of technology projects or electrification of a, of a village or rural village. Uh, it's, educating young teachers to um, better use technology in their classrooms or to help other children learn. And that's really the beauty of it is your members can decide what they want. But well, we want more networking and so that the outreach, you're not, you're not cast to have to do you know, um, just because one group loves outreach. But so that's the thing is I first say, engage your members and come up with ideas. Okay, what is our interest? Let's survey, let's do a poll of what people want. And, and we can give you resources, no matter which angle, which avenue or pathway you wanna take. And one of the things I'll do a plug for right now, for instance, is uh, a lot of students wanna think about pathways to industry, which, you know, Charlotte is amazing, the panelist on. So. <laughs> How do I get into industry? Well, HKN does a beautiful program called Pathways to Industry. So women in engineering can partner with them rather than trying to do everything alone and independently. We have so much more power and resources when we collaborate among ourselves within IEEE and, uh, and it becomes way more impactful. Yeah, let me just emphasize what Karen said. There's a lot of help. OK, so if you're interested in, you know, doing any sort of HKN activity or even we activity, there's resources. There are people there to help you out. We have the idea, you know, we have IEEE headquarters behind us and we have uh, folks that are volunteers and we have super volunteers. We have, you know, regional coordinators. So there's are a lot of different ways, you know, how we how we can help each region. The interests of the women in region one may not be the same as in region two or region eight, nine or 10. And so this is why we have regional ambassadors and regional coordinators to assist with us. And again, we're global. You don't have to stay within your own um, chapter or in your own section, in your own locale, but you can outreach over, you know, into the different regions. Thank you. Right. And again, when we talk about these projects, Sandra, I also want to talk, there's money. So when we talk about resources, it's, it's the shell is actually, there's, there's actually money for projects. So that's another thing that people don't realize. And um, right now, HKN, we are running Grad Lab, which is all different resources to help students get into graduate school, success, be successful in graduate school, and um, learn how to navigate the landscape. Thank you. I, I, I really uh, appreciate the fact that uh, there are several opportunities uh, to organize activities, of course, which is great because I, I really do agree on the fact that I've seen this 
in my, you could say, small experience as a student governor. Uh, of course, the needs of uh, women or students more in general from one region to other regions can change a lot. And so trying to keep these, um, you know, open paths uh, for everyone to choose what it's best for them, I think it's, it's really great and it really serves the purpose. So it's it's really, really, really interesting. And thank you for, for this brief background on IEEE WE. So now that we um, have a clearer idea of what I, uh, IEEE WE stands for and does, um, I would like uh, to move into the next section and talk a, a little bit about how HKN and WE can collaborate expand more on this point. And the question really goes to the uh, both of you, uh, Charlotte and Karen. Um, how do you think that these organizations uh, can join forces? And if you are aware of ongoing or even past collaborations between HKN and WE uh, chapters, starting with, I guess, Charlotte. Well, Karen just mentioned one. So we had a... Uh, uh... Uh, a WE and HKN event, and again, both Karen and I actually participated in the Diversity Day at Boston University. So they are ongoing, and I'm very happy to see uh, this as a, 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 a an additional event that both HKN and WE are doing. But anytime you have an HKN member and a WE member together, and that could be the same person, you have an event, and they can go ahead and then say, hey, grow our group, get more people involved. So there has been ongoing collaboration and it's all dependent on our, our, our volunteer base. And I just wanna add, you know, HKN is well known to have huge numbers, hours of volunteer service, community service. So I think the last year was over 85,000 hours, might be more, but I, I, that's one of the numbers I recall. So we're, our, our HKN members are already doing community service and we members uh, are, are really, uh, you know, one of the major features of programs that, and engineering programs that attract women are ones that have larger social impact. So anything that involves helping communities is a great way to engage and retain new women into the disciplines and have them understand what you know the disciplines are and things like that. And I also want to talk about there are other societies. I typically has over 39 other societies, technical societies. Like I'm the vice president of IEEE Systems Man and Cybernetics, but I'm also a member of robotics and automation and, and signal processing and you know all these different interest groups. And it is another way to expand your horizons. And one of the one of the great events I think that just happened recently was um, we had a company, a sponsored company come in and mail out robot kits. And we did a workshop because we couldn't do it during COVID, but they mailed out the robot kits to the participants so that you could build your technical skills and you got a free robot out of it, which I thought was amazing. So those types of, of collaborations really go great. And it's really trying to get the word out and get more people to engage and participate. Yeah, let me give a, a plug to the Pathways to Industries. That's an event that HKN puts on. Now, why wouldn't industry want to sponsor that conference? Because the HKN is where, you know, your top students are. So whether it's for internships or for full-time employment, this is where you want to get your, uh, you know, your nominees, you know, people to, uh, to start working for you. And another reason, well, women in engineering, hey, what a combination, right? You got diversity yeah. inclusion, you got your smart women, this is where to go. So collaborations and events with HKN and we, yeah, you don't need any, you don't need anything more than that. That's right. There's, there's your badge right there. Yep. So that's yeah. one thing. And, 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 you know, people usually say, oh, well, you know, again, this is what I want to bring in the gender and neutrality of it is when people see, um, you know, I can't tell you how many male uh, candidates come to the WE conference or participate or even send in mentoring, uh, their mentoring activities of, of their outreach activities to the Women in Engineering magazine. Companies want not just women that appreciate diversity, they want men as well who really get it. 
And I think that that's being part of this community membership is, is one way that, you know, you, that you're demonstrating that. So having that on your CV really does add a credential that makes you stand out from every other, you know, engineering student graduating from every, every engineering program in the world. I, I absolutely agree. I mean, these values are for anyone, really. I mean, not just for, for women. So I, uh, I really like that point. I would like to highlight that uh, as well. And you have given great examples, great advice. So do you have any um, additional advice uh, for chapters, for HKN chapters, on how to engage with uh, we uh, chapters, besides what you, you were uh, saying so far? Well, I want to give a big plug that I don't think people realize, Sandro, that I just mentioned those 39 technical societies. They all have distinguished lecturer series. When what that is, is IEEE societies pay for a distinguished lecturer. For, so if you're interested in robotics, you can find a female distinguished lecturer to come in and fly in to your place, give a talk, and it's paid for by, it's sponsored by IEEE. And so one of the ways when people say, well, I want to network, well, I want to work at this company. I'm going to fly in Dr. Charlotte Blair to talk about, you know, microwave wireless stuff. And she's going to, you know, network with me with her company. And I'm going to have this opportunity to hear her speak in person and do this. So I, I don't see enough student organizations or even the young professional groups taking advantage of that many because our hkn members happen to be really prestigious recognized people they are part of these distinguished lecturer programs so there's another opportunity there's cross fertilization between hkn wie and these distinguished lecturer series that brings in the technical discipline a specific technical discipline so if you're interested in artificial intelligence pick your poison whatever you like we have somebody free available ready to come in and talk to you about it and let, and let me just say one additional thing so uh, last year's we chair um 2020 we chair she has had all of the technical societies take this ieee we pledge and the we pledge just simply says Let's make sure we have a woman engineer part of your uh, technical XCOM, whether it's also the DML program, but make sure you represent us. Right, but it also says diversity. So even at women in engineering events, you will find that there's not always just a board of all women or panel of all women. It will have, um, you know, uh, rep be representative of everyone. So that's one of the things we're not just trying to say it's just about women. It's about community building because I always give the example of you can't solve a social problem with just half the population. And I give the example of like, you know, um, thank gosh, thank God for, bre you know, when we have researchers trying to solve diseases like breast cancer, that's predominantly affects women, but you don't just say only women solve that problem. No, it affects everybody. So we have to have full engagement of every participant to solve these world challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and thank you for, for that message. I, I think it, it's really, really important. Um, so, is there any way, I mean, how can an HKN member join a, uh, or any IEEE uh, student member in that sense, join a WE uh, chapter? And I would like not only to hear from both of you about how to do so from an operational point of view, but and I guess Karen has touched that point earlier, uh, but can you share your experience, uh, personal experience when you first joined WE and what attracted you in, in the first place? Sure. Well, I, I joined over 20 years ago. I was a, um, a professor at Tufts University here in Massachusetts, and I was the only woman 
in my department and there was a matter of fact it was probably in the whole school of engineering there was maybe no women but me and uh when i joined there wasn't even a ladies room so you know that just shows you how how male dominated it the field was so i was desperate to connect with other women exhibiting experiencing the same thing and i had come from industry where we did have a lot of women not a lot but still people to talk to so I was introduced to women in engineering by uh, the past IEEE president, Dr. Arthur Winston. So he was president of, um, of IEEE and he reached out to me. I reached out to him and I said, you know, I'm trying to engage. Is there a way for me to engage? And he connected me with the WIE. And, um, and the next thing I know, I put in a nomination to be on the committee. And not only did I get on the committee, but they made me the chair. You know, uh, and, and I was like, okay, that's, a, and, but, and I had never traveled outside the United States. So the next thing I know is here's my, here's, get a passport and I'm on my way to Paris for my first WIE meeting to meet the committee. I met women from all around the world who was just so welcoming and so positive and encouraging. And I said, wow, this is the community that I've been looking for. And I wanted to make sure that when I became successful, uh, any success that I had, I wanted to make sure that I could help others in the future. And that is now my entire, I would say my entire philosophy is it's not about me, it's about me helping the next generation. And that's really what WIE is all about is helping women, empowering women, and everyone to do their best, in, in, in despite of all obstacles and all the naysayers and people who try to keep you down or tell you you're not good enough, finding that community that lifts you up and gives you the tools and resources to succeed. Yeah, and let, and let me say, so how did I get to WE? I was always involved with IEEE as, you know, even as a student, you know, as you're, as you're doing your studies, you know, you want to publish and IEEE is very, uh, f um, recommend it, having a publication in any of the IEEE uh, magazines or the conferences is, is preferred. And so you're going at over and you're, and you're, you're applying for uh, conference right. papers and you're uh, looking to uh, uh, present. So I was always with the technical societies and for decades. And then at one point, you know, I said, I was actually like Karen saying, I was getting tired of being the only female. I was getting tired of, you know, trying to promote myself alone. Okay, because there's not too much, you know, you, there's not that many other females in your group or even in your, you know, in, in your company. And so I saw a call for papers for the We Forum East. And I said, oh, it's local to me. I can drive there. Let me go ahead and, you know, submit in a paper because I wanted to present. Well, pleasantly surprised it was accepted. But when I got there, what a major difference in the conference. A WE conference, just like Karen said, is very welcoming. It's empowering because you meet other females and you meet females who are trying to uplift you. Not to say, oh, who is she? Oh, what does she has to, what, do, what does she have to prove? They are very encouraging. They want you to do better. And this is what we need. You know, you know HKN already is the best of the best, okay? But you also need to give back, okay? So we do need to give back. And the only way we can be give back is really, you can't do it alone. When they say you really need, you know, a, a country to uplift you, well, there's your country. It's the WE committee, HKN committee. You need something to say, yes, go, please go forward and, and you're doing well. So that's how I got into WE. And Karen, like I said, that, that was at that, at that conference, you see, I go there as a, a presenter and now I'm uh, running the conference just because, you know, they're great volunteers in, in that, uh, uh, you know, society. Thank you. And, and that is great. I mean, having a space that, that can help you growing as a professional, but also I would say as a person, because it's a space for you to, as you were saying, uh, for you to, to to feel validated, uplifted, that is really, really, really important, I guess. And um, 
the last question for the both of you would be what benefits if you would like to expand on some of what we have previously touched uh, do you think that hkn members or i would say any student member can get from joining being active part of women in engineering sure and i'll start with that because i want to jump off of something charlotte said um, you know, it, one of the nicest things about being supported is to get to the next level. And sometimes, you know, uh, especially students, they think sending in resumes or something will, will get them there. And that's not the way to, to, to make these connections. I think people are finding that, that, you know, you really need to know somebody to help you to get there. I, I like the opportunity that she mentioned about being able to present. And one of the other things shot really hit on what I want to drive home is, women especially and young students have trouble celebrating themselves and seeing their value of well what do i know i'm just a student hkn has the bridge magazine wie has the, the women in engineering magazine this is a way for you right now we're collecting for the bridge we're collecting profiles on students graduate students to talk about their research what better way to, to promote yourself is to get your research out there to get the opportunity to showcase what you're doing, to share your experiences um, in, in your pathway. And you might say, well, what does that do for me? Well, it puts your name out there. It shows that, you know, if somebody's willing to publish something about you, well, you must be worth something. And I think that that promotion helps build you up. There's also resources. There's so many fellowships and graduate um, and undergraduate um, scholarships. And I'm sitting on these panels and sometimes I see three or four applications. And yet, you know, it's like, wow, you know, the odds of winning one of these ex really prestigious scholarships is one in four. That's pretty darn good. I, apply for them. Why not? If you might say, well, I'm not good enough. You know what? Stop telling yourself that and you won't know until you try. So I think that that's the other one. And then the other big one is you. everybody wants to move forward and you need someone to help open doors for you. And no, one's, and no one does that better than HKN and women in engineering. So I'm still opening doors, Charlotte's still opening doors. And, and we hope that you know, the students that we help someday think about, wow, I'm here because someone took the vested interest in me, didn't know me very well, but because we were together in HKN and women in engineering, trusted that I had the scholarship attitude and character and perseverance and social um, social, you know, awareness to want to make a difference that they, they trusted me and invested in me. Yep. It's, it's that perfect networking, right? It's you're in your comfort zone. You're in a community where people like are like you, you're not different. So you're comfortable. You don't have your, your solid wall in front of you where you, you're afraid to say something or, you know, raise a hand and ask a question. You're in your comfort zone. You feel relaxed, and the and like I said, and the people behind you, they're they're yeah, that's right. I was thinking the same thing. I was going to ask that, but I was afraid to. But you feel comfortable enough to ask that question because you don't feel like someone's going to make fun of you. Right, and I love so, the fact that somebody wants to describe that Tripoli is saying, you know, in 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 industry, you need experience to get the next level job. Well, I Tripoli will give you a budget and a leadership role. <laughs> and let you spend their money or our money right to try you out as a leader they trust you and you know and and not everything is successful but you gain those leadership skills and someone it's so where in management if you want to get a job you know running a a, a million dollar organization that might not happen but in w wie and in hkn you're running a conference you're running a, your presentations you're running um seminars you get that opportunity and you're spending somebody else's money and you get the opportunity to show that you know how to make money absolutely and, and the pe yeah sorry and people ahead. are there to help you that's the thing and in my very limited experience i can uh, reiterate that as well i mean as an hkn student of course still being a student phd student uh, the experience I've gained from, from leading these roles is invaluable. And I, I guess it's really important when I will eventually move to the industry, uh, having this set of uh, information experience, first-hand experience 
I, I, I think will really help me in the future. And knowing that there is a space for anyone, women and male engineers to, to gain, if they want, of course, this set of uh, experiences, skills, soft skills, hard skills is really, really, really important. So uh, is there any final thought or anything you'd like to reiterate as we wrap up? I just want to say engage, reach out to us, um, you know, volunteer, come to a meeting, just be, be more involved. And it doesn't have to be a, a big time commitment. It could just be you coming as an attendee. But think of, I, I always, um, I, I heard uh, in the HAC conference, they talked about SMART goals. I, I, I call them, I want you to have something SMART goals too, which is specific, you know, something you really manage, something that, that you can achieve, something that's realistic and that and, and a timeline to do it. And if you say, I'm going to attend the next SL, SLC, HK SLC, or I'm going to attend a Pathways program, Make it happen and commit yourself to it. And you'd be so surprised how once you're in, you will never leave. And remember, HKN's for life. I think people don't realize that, Sandro. HKN is a designation for life. It's not, you know, you get inducted and then you disappear. Absolutely. And yep. Definitely term? take that first step and engage. That's exactly what you do. Just do something, whether, you know, I'm more of a face-to-face. A, a -face. I like to talk to people, you know, yeah, go ahead, send an email and then set up set up now a, a, a Zoom or WebEx meeting to meet them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, I would like to remind of some upcoming uh, events or uh, initiatives. Uh, so we have session three of Great Lab that is upcoming. That is one thing you want to keep in mind. Uh, I would like also to remind you that the new issue of The Bridge is out, so make sure to check it out. It always is full of great content and we really love it. And also we would like to remind you to vote uh, your favorite Founders Day video by November 17th. And thank you to all chapters who submitted Founders Day videos. We, we really appreciate it, uh, the effort you put every time for these submissions. And so with that, I would like to thank you so much, uh, Charlotte, Karen, uh, for being here today. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and share with us your invaluable experience and insights. So once again, really thank you. And also to everyone watching today and be sure to like, subscribe and follow us so you don't miss another episode. Bye everyone. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> thank you.